Hi, we're going to discuss about Vygotsky's social cultural theory. Lev Vygotsky is a Russian psychologist. He's the founder of the social cultural theory, which emphasizes contextual factors in cognitive development. The contextual perspective refers or considers the relationships between individuals and the physical, cognitive, personality, social, cultural, and environmental influences on development. Vygotsky believed that social interaction plays a critical role in children's learning. He did not focus on the individual child, but on the child as a product of social interaction, especially with adults. There are three themes in Vygotsky's ideas of social cultural learning. Number one, human development and learning originate in social, historical, and cultural interactions. The best example for this um, human development na social, historical, and cultural interaction, I see Dr. Jose Rizal. No? Let's see how Jose Rizal learn and develop. Because people think differently between culture because different cultures stress different things. In Rizal's time, even today, they place a high value on education. Kaya sila nag-aaral. No, women were not even privileged to study. In fact, Dr. Jose Rizal wrote a letter to a group of young women in Malolos kasi the young women of Malolos wanted to put up a night school so they could study a uh, Spanish language pero hindi sila pinayagan. No? That is during the time of Rizal. So doon nagbabago yung mga social, historical, and cultural interaction natin. Number two themes ni Vygotsky. The use of psychological tools, particularly language, mediate development of higher mental functions. Language is very important. This theory of Vygotsky was originally in Russian. And when it was translated to English, na-appreciate ng mga Americans, kaya nila na-adapt. Siyempre, mas madali magturo kapag ka nagkakaintindihan yung mga nagtuturo at saka yung tinuturoan. Diba? Just the same if you're watching K-drama and you do not know the Korean language, you have to look or read the subtitles. Cognitive tools also support children's developing mental abilities. So, cognitive tools can be maps, clocks, books, mathematical symbols, hindi lang language, no? Pwede music, pwede yung mga gadget natin, yung mga laptop, yung mga digital devices, pwede yung mga cognitive tools that can help a child to process information and develop their higher mental functions. Okay? So, let's try to uh, give Rizal as an example. Okay, let's look at Rizal's first teacher. Sino unang teacher niya? Si Doña Chedora. Uh, she discovered that her son had a talent for poetry. So, she encouraged Rizal to write poems. Next, sino yung susunod niyang mga teacher? May mga private tutor si Rizal. Si Maestro Celestino, Maestro Lucas, si Leon Monroy. At nung nag-aral si Rizal sa Binyan, Laguna, meron siyang maestro Hostiniano na nagturo sa kanya ng mga academics. So natalo ni Rizal yung mga a boy sa Binyan, he surpassed them all in Spanish, Latin, and other subjects kasi nga may nagturo sa kanya. Next, Life and Studies in Ateneo. He belonged to the class composed of Spaniards, Mestizos, and Filipinos. He was considered as an inferior and was placed at the bottom of the class. By the end of the month, he became the emperor and received a prize, a religious picture. To improve his Spanish, Rizal took private lessons in Santa Isabel College. So si Rizal, he never stopped learning. No? Kahit maturuan na siya ng... Sabin, I mean, sabi niya ng Spanish and Latin, nag-aral pa rin siya sa so, Santa Isabel College. Okay, next, extracurricular involvement ni Rizal. He studied painting under the famous Spanish painter, Agustin Saez. 
he improved his culture talents under the supervision of Romualdo de Jesus, and he engaged in gymnastics and fencing and continued the physical training under his sports-minded Tio Manuel. Okay, balikan natin niya na yung example ni Rizal. Meron tayong term na guided participation. According to this, a learner actively acquires new culturally valuable skills and capabilities through a meaningful collaborative activity with an assisting, more experienced person. Who are the more experienced person in Rizal's life? Andiyan yung sports-minded Tio Manuel niya, yung mga tutor niya, yung mga maestro niya, yung tutor niya sa Santa Isabel College ng Spanish. Di ba napakarami niyang more experienced person? In present day, if you like sports like volleyball, for example, yung coach mo, yung more experienced person. No, maswerte tayo na may mga experienced person or coach or mentors na nagtuturo sa atin. We have another term, scaffolding. A teacher, teachers model or demonstrate how to solve a problem and then step back offering support as needed. When um, scaffolding where children are given support, no, the key term here, here is support to perform tasks that are beyond what they can accomplish on their own. Kapag kami mga bagay na hindi kaya ng isang bata, isosupport natin siya. Yung support na yun, yung area na yun, yun yung scaffolding. Kasi may mga bagay na kaya ng nilang gawin mag at may mga bagay na dapat may gumagabay sa kanila para mas matuto sila. Why Godski believe that a person not only has a set of abilities but also a set of potential abilities that can be realized if given the proper guidance from others. No? The guided participation is known as scaffolding. Yung mga magtuturo sa atin pwede yung teacher, capable peers, yung mga experience, yung mga expert person. And the child learn cognitive skills within a certain range known as the zone of proximal development. Ito yung pang third team ni Vygotsky. Learning a course within the zone of proximal development. Let's continue. Diba? Ito meron tayong circle. Yung green, I can do this by myself. Mag-isa. Yung pink, this is the zone of proximal development. I can do this with some help. Yung with some help, that's the scaffolding. And then the gray part, I can't do this even with help. Okay, to give a bit, to give a more concrete example, let's try this. Yung zone of actual development, ito yung kaya ng bata. What the child can already accomplish on his or her own without assistance from more experienced others. Example, arithmetic. 2 plus 2 equals 4. Kayang-kaya na yan. Yung zone of proximal development or ZPD, what the child can accomplish with help from a more knowledgeable peer, adult, or teacher. Example, algebra. 4x plus 5 equals y. Para masolve niya yan, kailangan niyang may magturo sa kanya or may mag-assist. Yung scaffolding, ito yung mga task dito sa ZPD na may gumagabay sa kanya. Yung zone of eventual development, no? yung mas mataas sa ZPD, what the child cannot yet accomplish. Even with the help of someone else. Example, pinag-solve ka ng calculus. Z, F, X, hindi ko na siya kayang basahin kasi hindi ko rin siya kayang isolve. So, that is beyond what a child can do. Diba? So, that's a zone of eventual development. So, another figure. Ito. Um, we have the level of challenge, yung calculus for example, and the level of competence, yung 1 plus 1 lang. Kapag ka masyadong ma-easy yung pinapagawa sa atin, we may become bored. Pero kapag kasakto lang, yung sa zone of proximal development na kaya natin, na nacha-challenge pa rin tayo, at may nagtuturo sa atin. Yun, that's the scaffolding. No? Pag lumampas na um, tayo doon, what the learner will be able to achieve independently. Kapag ka natuto na tayo dito sa zone of proximal development, magagawa na rin natin siya na mag-isa kapag ka natutunan natin yun. Okay, pag kami binigay sa atin na task, like for example, yung calculus kanina, 
nandito tayo sa anxiety zone, no? Hindi natin alam kahit ako basahin ko pa lang na anxiety na ako doon sa itsura ng calculus. But we can learn kung nandito pa tayo sa learning zone, no? Sa zone of proximal development. Okay, so I hope class you were able to understand and learn the zone of proximal development, check and scaffolding, and yung socio-cultural uh, perspective ni Alev Vygotsky. Okay? So, uh, to end, sabi rito, speak up and ask for help. Support will always be available as long as we ask for it. Okay? So, for now, I'll end that.